When a crime's been committed, we usually tell you about the search for suspects. Tonight, we're talking about the search for possible victims. Not where they are, but who they are. As Meredith Anderson shows us, investigators are counting on you to help. These people were real people. They had real spirits. They had real personalities. But who they really are, they've tried dental, is a real mystery. They've tried fingerprints. There's no fingerprints. So it's time for Kelly Larson to give it a try. I'm the last station on the end of the rail. That stop is this room at the Georgia Bureau of Investigations. Kelly is the GBI's only forensic artist. We're talking thousands upon thousands upon thousands of unidentified remains. Kelly starts with a skull and not a replica of a skull. She attaches draft erasers like an architect uses to the actual skull. So all I have to do is take a hair dryer and point it at the skull and they'll come right off. They frame the face. Clay gives it its shape. She incorporates clues found at the scene, like glasses. If the mouth is open and you see teeth, those are the person's actual teeth. She has it all down to a science. Then art takes over. I paint them to look realistic. We put wigs on them. They have doll's eyes. There's a lot of guesswork in this police work. You think, I don't know why, I just feel like this person had green eyes. And so you go with it. But ultimately, Kelly has to fill in all the blanks for the bones to come alive. We really try to follow the intuition. We really try to pray about it, be spiritual about it, follow the spirit as much as we can. The hope? Someone will recognize something about him or him. And if someone has striking blue eyes, it is by far the first thing that you notice about a face. So if you see a skull reconstruction and you think it could be so and so, but no, she had beautiful blue eyes, then don't let that discourage you. Let that encourage you to share these faces on Facebook. They are people and they have families and, and someone's looking for them. Kelly hopes you'll look at the GBI site and look often. You never know, you might recognize someone or notice something. This man in particular caught my eye. His remains were found in Columbia County back in 1997. I contacted the Columbia County Sheriff's Office to get an incident report and found out he was identified back in 2007. This is Kenneth Hobson. I contacted the GBI and agents told me they are now working to update the system. Just incredible what she can do from it just really the, the bone structure. Mm -hmm. She does amazing work. And right now, there really isn't a centralized database for these unidentified remains. It's actually something Kelly suggests could really help. But here's something you can do. The way law enforcement investigates missing people has changed in the last decade. So if you have a cousin no one's heard from in a few years, they say to go ahead and file a report because having that info on file could help crack a lot of these cases. Pretty incredible. And if you missed our earlier report at 6 o'clock, yeah. go back and watch that online. It's, it's talk, talking about some of the sketching that she also does in an amazing way. Thanks, Meredith, for that.